could reach a little bit more, but still an eight. Impulsion, I, I think that again, the horse could be a little bit more ground covering in the canter, um, a little more, a bit more supple in the top line, at seven. Submission only because of the lack of lateral bend sometimes on the circles being consistent, but uh, that's the negative side of it. The positive side of it is that the horse is so willing uh, and accepting of what the rider has. So I would give a seven. The rider's position in the seat, I would give an eight. It occurred to me that I, am, I think that her hands are nearly invisible. I think she's a very centered, balanced rider and shows a lot of experience and body skills that I like. Uh, effective use of aids, I think she needs to pay a little bit more attention to this lateral suppleness in both directions. It's, uh, I think it will encourage the horse to use her back more, be more supple, to be able to be more active with the hind legs. And in harmony between horse and rider, I would give an eight uh, because I think they have a very nice working agreement. And then in collective marks, I think I want to make well, I won't make say it in my collective marks, but I'll say it to you that because we are so many times riding that the horse is tight in the neck and tight in the reins and restricted. When a horse comes in the arena and you see this lovely carriage the horse has reaching outward and accepting the bit. Of course, there are a few moments when there's a little stiffening, but for the most part, this is to me, I will ask a little if she agrees, but this is a little bit ideally what I like to see in training level, especially with the relaxation and also the stretching toward the bit, which we're always writing. Needs to stretch more, needs to stretch more. This horse has a lovely idea and a nice working agreement with the rider. Uh, I, I, I totally agree, totally agree with Gary. Surprise, surprise. But uh, uh, what I like about this particular rider is, is, you know, there are many times when you say, you know, you have a young horse and you would like to find the rider who is able to work with this young horse to a certain level, say. You know, I would give my young horses to this young lady in time. And you know, because she is really, truly allowing the horses to find its balance. She's not inhibiting the horses. You know, she has really, she creates a really quite nice connection with the horses. She is literally like looking at her hands and her position with the contact. She is literally just about invisible. And that to me, Riding young horses is so important. Uh, yes, there is always something you would like to see a little more of, of course. But you know, but when this horse learns to become a fraction bit more bendable around the right and left side, you know what this I rather see what I see here is rather than having a rider overbending the horses to the inside and forcing the bend. I, I would say this also one thing. It's always easier, easier to teach a rider to do more than to do less. And that passivity goes a long way with horses. So I think that, that men is riding the horse so quietly that with a few moments of encouragement to go ahead and bend the horse a little bit more, then you'd see the whole package and you'd see nothing on the cheek that would be less than an eight. And really, when you were working a little bit and the circle broke, you could see in that moment then, then I kind of told you to bend the horse. She was able to do it, but you know, in, in, in uh, the test situation, she was being very careful. She was making sure that she was able to give this horse confidence and needed to make the test. There is a difference between having been able to ride a circle five times in a row and then a little more and a little less and a little more, rather than having one circle that So 